Everything about this world screams virtual. And by the way, I'm not denying God when I say that. I'm saying God's a programmer, a very, very good programmer. Uh, but this place screams virtual reality. The double slit experiment, neuroscience versus free will. Uh, every there's there's so many little things about this world. Hell, even the hundredth monkey effect is is just screams virtual. So for me to bring up flat Earth, that's that's I, that is the lowest common denominator theme I can come up with because all the simulations that we build, you may or may not know, I don't know if you've ever played a game in your life, they're all flat. Mark, welcome to Shifting Dimensions. For those of you who are tuning in, I am speaking with Mark Sargent, and Mark is one of the leading proponents of and recruiters for the Flat Earth Conspiracy Theory in the United States. In 2015, he released a series of YouTube videos titled Flat Earth Clues, which delves into the possibility of our human civilization actually being inside a Truman Show sort of like enclosed system and how it's been hidden from the public since 1956. Mark has also appeared on the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve. Mark, welcome to Shifting Dimensions. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for that lovely introduction. Okay, I want to start off by asking you, you know, what initially drew you to the flat earth theory? What is what is your story? How did you arrive at the flat earth theory? And, and why are you so passionate about it? Drugs? Almost no, no. And by that, I mean, a ton of hallucinogens that I just mixed together and turned into ice cubes and put them in a drink. Uh, no, no, I, it was, and I, I've said this on a number of different things. I got into it because I wasn't getting any younger and I was bored with all the normal conspiracies. And that sh could show, should show people how much flat earth does not resonate or didn't resonate with the, the general truth or community, which is I, I never got married or had kids. And so I had tons and tons and tons of free time in my hands. And by the time I hit, you know, after 40, I was like, wow, is there anything left to look at on the internet as far as, you know, conspiracy rabbit holes go? thought I had and then and I knew I knew in the corner of my eye it's like oh there's that flat earth thing I don't want to look at it I don't want to look at it. it's a piece of crap I don't want to look at it nobody does it's it's awful because we are taught since we since kindergarten that it is ridiculous right which should also kind of hint you on where this is going because why do we why is it the only thing we debunk to children right every other conspiracy out there no one cares about First thing, though, when you're getting in the classroom, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you used to think the world is flat. Now it's this spinny toy thing, you know, this blue spinny toy. And then we put it in the corner of the classroom and it never comes up again. But that globe stays in the classroom with you for at least 12 years until you graduate from high school. So I, in 2014, summer of 2014, I decided during the summer, summer afternoon, it's like, you know what? I got nothing better to do. I'm living in Colorado. I'm between software gigs. And so uh, why not? Why not chew on this thing? I should be able to knock out Flat Earth in a weekend. Worst mistake of my life. It was horrible <laughs> because I'm sitting there. It's like, okay, I'm going to treat this like a lawyer, right? It's like, I'm going to prove the globe in a court of law. So I sat down and I started, you know, pros and cons and, and you know, treating it like a court case. I'm looking at it. I'm just going, wow, this is not, this is not a slam dunk. And I keep working on it and working on it that weekend turned into weeks, which turned into months, which turned into the beginning of 2015. And I, you know, the, if you, I know, did you ever see the Netflix documentary, by the way? Yeah, I actually watched it a couple of years ago. Um, oh, and I was like, oh, this is, this is interesting. Yeah. So I, 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 that was the first time I came across you and, and your work, actually. There you go. So I got into, so I, I woke up. You know, three o'clock in the morning, February 10th, 2015. And I had that Jerry Maguire moment. I know that movie is older, but if you guys have ever seen Jerry Maguire, you get it. Where he wakes up and has this epiphany, this revelation, which is like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm going about this the wrong way, which is I'm trying to prove the globe. I'm going to go the other side of the scale and try to prove flat earth. And so I woke up with some of the, my, the clearest thoughts I've ever had and sat down much like Jerry Maguire did. And typed out all this stuff. And it's like, I made my, my first Flat Earth Clues introduction. It was only about 12 minutes worth of text. And, but it was really clear writing. I mean, it's like, okay, I'm going to, and I, I remember taking a shower before, as I got up at three in the morning, and I, I could hear the narrative in my own voice, in my head. 
it's like, oh yeah, that's what I'm going to, and that paragraph and that paragraph. And I sat down and it was one of the, the easiest um, things to write because I never had to backtrack. But by the time I was done, I looked back, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to change hardly anything. Maybe a few tiny little grammatical things. And then I said, okay, well, I better might as well narrate it. And then I put some slides to it. I didn't know anything about video editing. And if you've seen the first Flat Earth Clues, you understand that. I made it with a Windows Live Movie Maker. It was a free program, just kind of cobbled it all together and then put it out on the internet and put my, my name and my address and all the contact info you're never, ever supposed to do. And I did. And I thought, okay, but the internet hive mind, I consider them very intelligent. I think that somebody would be able to come. I was waiting for somebody with, honestly, with a master's degree to call me or, or write me. It's like, okay, here's where you screw it up. Forgot to carry the two. This is wrong. This, which means this is wrong, which means you can, you can destroy your YouTube channel uh, and get back to your normal life. It's, I was waiting for that to happen, hoping it would happen in some small way. Never happened. Uh, and then months as the, I mean, as the months started rolling, people started contacting me, reaching out, including subject matter experts, which they didn't talk about in the movie, just about every branch of the military pilots, uh, air traffic controllers, engineers, they all started contacting me because I had my contact information out there. And they said, yeah, it's not so nuts. Here's why. Right. And they start giving me new little things. It's like, what, what do you mean? I'm right. <laughs> Are you kidding? And so the, when I was waiting, the, the first six months, I w was waiting for the other shoe to drop. I was waiting for, for the thing to all collapse. And it just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And then other people started making content, right? Other, Steve, other people's like, you know what? I like where he's going. I'm going to start doing, I, if, well, that and he's such a dork. <laughs> if he can make a decent YouTube channel, I certainly can. And then all these other YouTube channels. And I, most of those guys are my friends now to where we started, you know, and then celebrities started coming out. And here we are nine years later uh, with you know, three books, Netflix documentary. In fact, another documentary just came out on Roku um, yesterday. Which what is was, it called? Uh, uh, Untold Origins, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. by by Fizuic Films, which I, I didn't think it was even going to go anywhere. But, there, the, but the media world has been contracting. As you know, there's not been met many new movies or television shows recently. So Roku picked it up. It's like, wow, really? Roku channel, mind you. Just because you have a Roku on your set doesn't mean you have the Roku channel. That's a separate thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's been a wild ride. And I have gotten to travel to different places. I never thought I'd go deliberately. Um, did conferences and all sorts of different fun things and, and met interesting people, both celebrity and non-celebrity. And here we are. Here I am talking to you. <laughs> It all led you to me. Um, that's that's interesting. You know, it's it really seems like this movement, right? Like right. I I've heard, you know, in the last couple of years, I heard whispers about flat earthers, even when I was younger, right? When I was really really young, I've always been fascinated by this existence, right? And I would look up at the sky and it, I'd look at the moon and I'd be like, what is that, right? So, right. as a five year old just thinking about the fact that I'm, I'm dry, my, you know, I'm in the back seat. my dad's driving on this flat surface. Right. So I would be trying to picture like where I was like, I'm like, is, is the earth flat? Is this thing that we're on flat? So, yeah. and then I would have this image, like if you're on a ship in the ocean, right. You're, you're in a ship. I, I would picture like the ship getting to the very edge <laughs> Tipping oh, of course of course that is <laughs> that is that is a meme many yeah memes, yeah exactly yeah. exactly so i would have those thoughts as a five-year-old right and there was a time where a lot of people believed that the earth was flat and then with the invention of the telescope and being able to look out into the stars obvious in and a bunch of other i'm not yeah. a scientist but so many things came out that debunked the fact that the earth was flat Right. right. So before we even get into subject matter experts reaching out to you, right. I want to talk about a little bit more about your interest in conspiracy theories, right? Because you talked about kind of looking into conspiracy theories and the flat earth theory was the last thing on your list or one of the ones that you weren't really interested in looking at right. before you actually looked into it. Right. So why have you always been drawn to conspiracy theories? Uh, because I grew up, you, well, I've got some theories behind that. Ah, theories, see what I did there? The, um, I got into it because I grew up in a very sheltered place. I grew up on an island northwest of, you know, up north of Seattle near Canada, very, very rural. And 
I was sheltered to the point where I didn't, well, not only did I think there was like only one religion when I was growing up until I got to college, uh, but I also thought that nobody lied for any reason in, in just about any capacity. And then, so to, so I was super naive all the way up until the, the early 90s when I saw uh, Oliver Stone's opus, which was JFK. If you've ever seen, you know, the three and a half hour JFK movie. And I saw it in a packed theater. Remember, there was no internet back then. I saw it in a packed theater. And I remember everyone, when they walked out of that theater, they were angry. You know, Oliver Stone did a wonderful job of intersplicing real footage with his footage. And when, if you know anything about how the brain works, People, you know, they were registering it to where it's like, wow, this actually could be possible. And when I got up, it's like, wait a minute. So, so people in power do lie about things or, or can, and then that just kind of snowballed and that led into, you know, other things. Of course, the big one that, that happened again, that predates you was uh 11 which I know we're not really supposed to talk about. But that one was a big one for the internet because the internet was just firing up and that was the big rabbit hole when when everything was happening. It was like 9-11 and the suspicious things around it. And then after that, once you start looking into those, there's all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, you know, the um, Pearl Harbor, always a big one in the United States. Uh, JFK, of course, the, the biggest probably, you know, in terms of scope, um, in terms of high profile uh little things you know mass shootings here and there but then you start looking into what governments do it's like look one, once you get down enough rabbit holes and i'm, I'm going to try to be paint broad strokes because i know we don't have unlimited time here which is people lie all the time and people in power lie to protect interests that's what most people do when and which is Sometimes they, they, they leave out things, they omit things, which is what they don't know won't hurt them. In fact, uh, one of our famous presidents, uh, FDR, the, our president during World War II, his, his, one of his quotes was fantastic. He said, you know what? Give the public only as much truth as they can handle and no more, which was like, yeah, I, I totally get that. But come on, we know. So everybody knows, you, you also know. Look, people lie. It's just a question of what we, how, what, what wheelhouse you're comfortable with. We know there's lies in business and politics and sports and entertainment. And yes, even science and journalism. There's lies. I mean, I could spend a, a day at least talking about any one of those topics. We know that corporations lie to protect their stockholders. We know that uh, governments lie to protect their interests in sports. Come on. No, nobody's done anything in sports. There's sports scandals all over the things. What the difference here is, is that there's government sanctioned conspiracies and then there's everything else. And by government sanctioned, I mean, if something, if you ever hear in the news of something that was a scandal or a tragedy where somebody dies, then that's sanctioned. Everything else is fringe, which is all, I've always been fascinating to me, which is the media you, who works for the government, like they're owned by corporations that are owned by corporations. The media, they're the ones that have to put their stamp of approval on it. That is something that we, you know, say happened, but this, oh no, that's fringe. That didn't happen in your conspiracy nut job if you think that. And it's like, yeah, I, I get it. So that's that's how I got into it. And uh, again, if you're into the computer world, I was on the internet when the internet was new. And so I saw the slow rollout of things and, you know, as the rabbit holes developed to where now, you know, what I tell people is I like question everything, you know, when it comes to, unless it's a car crash in the news, look at it and squint and say, okay, what, who's trying to do what here? And, and by the way, one more thing real fast, I, and I, I want to backtrack a bit to the flat earth, but the, I want to mention this to people because people say, okay, there's no such thing as fake news, right? You've heard that every once in a while. There's no such thing. Fake news. No, not real. It's like, really? Okay. Resolve these two sentences. Ready? Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. Uh oh, uh oh. How you, how are you gonna resolve those? Remember, they're both supposedly objective news agencies. Both of them accuse each other of lying constantly, so they both can't be true, but yet they are, which is weird. You know, you won't say, you won't hear Fox News necessarily call out and say, "Oh, CNN's lying through their teeth," and so is MS MSNBC. But they will say that Republicans are lying through their teeth, and Democrat, you know, damn Democrats versus the lying Republicans. So yeah, so I'm sorry, real real quick here for your for your listeners, uh, I, I should probably backtrack to the to the flat Earth concept real fast, which is what what are we talking about here? What, what we're saying is that you're not on this tiny little rock 
covered with a little bit of um, uh, water and a tiny little bit of gas that's flying through an impossible universe, you are living in a soundstage. A uh, Hollywood backlot, a terrarium, a planetarium, whatever you, whatever you think. It's basically a domed structure that's flat, but it simulates a solar system, much like a planetarium does. And it's so big and so well-developed that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960. And when they figured it out, they decide, it's like, yeah, civilization's pretty much already set in motion. We don't want to mess with it. Men in power do not roll the dice. They do not take a chances for something like that. And so they decided to uh, keep a lid on it, so to speak. So there you go. Sorry, I ramble. No, no, no. That was good because that leads me to my next question, which is you said that when you first put out your video in 2015, yeah. Subject matter experts were reaching out to you. And my assumption with subject matter experts are probably, you know, scientists or, or people who are very into physics or maybe potentially work for NASA who are able to kind of do research um, or scientific studies into whether or not the earth is flat or just the way you just described it. Right. right so right, I right, want right. to know, like, what clues were they giving you? Right. Because you just said that uh, I don't want to misquote you right essentially right. the earth is flat and it's covered by this like massive dome that simulates right. like some sort of like like we're floating on a rock and there's stars and there's, right. there's the sun and all that stuff you're saying that it's more of a simulation of some sort well, so yeah mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead well so I guess I just want to know what what were the clues that they were giving you to kind of say oh this is actually not as crazy as you think it is. Right. And how do we know for sure that we are in a dome? Like are, are there pictures, you know, what sort of tests have been run? Right. The the first people that contacted me uh, were military guys, uh, which was and by the way, NASA I want to I want to clarify there just so you don't go down the wrong road, which is NASA never reached out to me, nor would they ever reach out to me. We are they are the enemy of flat Earth. You know, remember, it, if if we if we're flat Earth, you know, our group is is saying that we're in a snow globe, then NASA has to be absolutely fake. And the American space program, God bless them, are absolutely fraudulent since mi minute one, going all the way back to the Apollo, you know, to, to the moon missions, which is sad, I, unfortunately, and I, I, let me say that really fast, which is, it, it always kills me that in America, of course, we are told, we're almost ordered to believe in the, the American space program, you know, patriotism, which, you know, Fox News, Dana Perino on Fox News, she had this wonderful quote. She goes, I believe in the, in the moon program because I'm a patriot. Looking straight at the camera, it's like, oh, wow, you aren't even gonna hide that, are you? You're basically saying if you know what's good for you, you you believe in whatever the government tells you to believe in. It's like, yeah, nothing dangerous about that at all. So, but when it comes to the other people that reached out to me, the first people that reached out to me were the um uh the military, military guys. And by that, I mean guys that fired guns and missiles, big, big guns, not the sniper guys that you see about in the news, like, oh, I had to count for the curvature of the earth when I fired that one mile long shot. It's like, no, that's weak. That's weak sauce. I'm talking to the guys that fire howitzers, that fire tanks, that fire missiles, that, that, that any of that stuff where they're firing 20, 30, 50 miles and, and longer, right? And they all came to me and said, yeah, you know, it's really funny when we fire things like that, in our firing solutions, when we, you know, we look down range, we make all the calculations, we don't factor in the curvature of the earth and we don't factor in the spin of the earth either. It's weird. It's in the manual. We never use it and everything works just fine. So why is, and everybody, you know, these guys didn't know each other and everyone called me up individually, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, all these guys kept saying, so yeah, firing solutions, we never use it in anything that we do it's in the manual but the but all the veterans will tell you as soon as in fact the rookies always when they when they get it, it's like hey don't we have to worry that use this equation and they're like yeah don't worry about it it's not gonna ever it's not gonna ever happen which is odd right because remember the the, cur the curvature of the earth supposedly is eight inches per mile per mile and i'm not trying to freak you out with math or anything but that means you should be able to factor that in because it gets severe at, at like 30 and 50 miles and the other thing is the spin of the earth, right? Supposedly spinning at a thousand miles an hour at the equator. And uh, one of my friends, uh, a master gunner from the United States Army, he said, he goes, you know how difficult war would be if we had to take into account the spin of the earth? Because remember, it's spinning supposedly at a thousand miles an hour at the equator, but up in the northern where we are in America, it's only spinning at like 600 miles an hour. 
And then depending on where you are, so you before you even fired in certain distances, you'd have to factor all that in. It's like it would take time. It would slow things way, way down. We never take, we never do that ever. And it, he goes, and we hit pretty damn accurately. So how how does that happen? Um, other people that got a hold of me, uh, contractors that worked for the military. That one of my favorites was a, a submarine guy that said he goes, there's only like four or five companies in the world that build the door seals for submarines. When you're inside that, you know, when you've seen the submarine movies where they shut the door and spin the wheel and they go to the next compartment. He goes, all those seals have to be absolutely exact, custom made for each one of those doors and every one of these submarines. He's going, he goes, he goes, that's odd. He goes, because on the space station, they don't use any of those doors. They leave all the doors wide open from, from compartment to compartment to compartment. He goes, that goes absolutely against procedure, right? In submarines, we have those doors because if one compartment fails, you don't want the rest of the submarine to get flooded and people die, right? But in the space station, which is even worse, he goes, it doesn't even, they don't even seem to care. Like it's not, it, like it's not a factor. And not only that, he, he said, um, he said the the there's a reason why submarines are so heavy. You know, the pressure is so, you know, if you know anything about submarines, they're super, super heavy, heavy, heavy steel, right? Because the pressure is so much on the outside. He goes, in fact, if you took a submarine to space, the, uh, the, the submarine would probably survive because of the pressure would want to get out, you know, from the vacuum of space. He goes, but so what's the ISS made out of? Aluma, aluminum and plastic. It's like, how does that work? Because it would just explode the pressure from the inside. And you look up anything on YouTube. You can type, type this in anything you want, anything in a vacuum chamber, uh, football, basketball, soda can, anything with pressure on it, put it in a vacuum chamber, it just expands and expands until it explodes. The ISS doesn't do that. In fact, you want know, the, the, the most obvious thing, which I made a clue on, uh, that, which is, you know, you know what else doesn't do that? Spacesuit. That's weird because a spacesuit's really just a balloon with a guy inside it. So when they're in the vacuum, why doesn't it just turn into a parade float, right? And then he can't move his arms and his legs, you know, because the air would fill, would, would take the shape of the suit, and then he just tip over and die. What? Why? Why doesn't that happen? No one talks about it. In fact, I put a challenge out to scientists years ago, and I'm sorry, and I'm rambling, but I'll, I'll wrap this up in 30 seconds, which is, I put a challenge out to scientists years ago. I go, tell me what when the 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 moon astronauts, what was in that magical backpack of theirs that stopped counteracted the vacuum of space i go they can move their arms and knees everything you know articulation points they could move their fingers put together electronics they had no problem with it and and not only that if i you want to tell me oh you do with microprocessors in 2024 tell me how they did in 1969 right and sorry one more thing about the astronauts i gotta throw this in there i, I know i'm all over the place but but you'll get this which is if you have you do you know anybody that scuba dives no Okay, but you know the concept, right? Yes. You know, you get in your tanks. And by the way, what we're breathing in right now, most people, I'm going to throw you a couple of quick science lessons. You're not breathing in much oxygen, right? It's in fact the 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 what we're breathing in is 80% nitrogen, which is an inert gas that apparently doesn't do anything, and then 20% oxygen. You forget about the trace gases, and that's what scuba divers breathe when they're down below, right? And they've got this big gauge, and that's all they care about when they're down there. There's this big gauge: how much air do I have left? Right. And they're constantly watching it constantly because, you know, when you get down, it's like, oh, it's like eight minutes. Probably start heading back up. Right. You know who never cared about how much air they had? The astronauts on the moon ever. I can't find a single single audio recording from an astronaut that even talks about it. you'd think. Remember, they're, they're walking on the moon. It's a vacuum. You think if you walking around, it's like, oh, hey, Buzz, we only got like 14 minutes left. We, we ought to head back. No one ever talks about it. it's again, it's Hollywood rules, which is if you know anything about the movies, it's a plot device, which is like, yeah, you know, what? we'll just gloss over it. Who cares? No one's going to no one's going to pay attention to it anyway. Do you have a model of the the the, the flat earth model that you go by? Because I know that they're different. People have different ways of depicting yeah. what the flat earth looks like, just so the viewers can get a better look of, you know, oh, yeah. what you're talking about. Okay, Here. awesome. You got a visual aid for you. How's that? Okay, okay. perfect, perfect. That's that's it's, great. The, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a giant snow globe. That's really right. that's really all it is, with a shallow roof. You know, snow globes have a really, really high roof. Right. Um, in fact, even this, even the dome on this is probably higher than it needs to be. Uh, with, you know, the, the North Pole in the center, the continents splayed out like islands or around mm -hmm. the outside. It's basically a giant saltwater lake inside a building. N really not that much different than the Truman Show. The Truman Show, if you remember the movie with Jim Carrey from years ago, was like 20 miles wide and had its own little ocean. This 
would be thousands of miles wide and maybe a few thousand miles high and the sun and the moon would be tiny even really smaller than what you see there and the um maybe less than 50 miles wide and they fly overhead like a mobile above a, a child's crib so, so what what is so i guess what i'm trying to understand here right because with everything that you said a part of me is like how do you know this isn't confirmation bias right because what if it's one of those situations where because sometimes when I hear flat earthers talk, it sounds like they made up their mind that the earth is flat. Now they're going to go and find evidence to basically um, support their belief, right? right, right? right, right. Versus versus Why? being like, is the earth flat? That Let me try to find out, right? So, so that's one part of one of the questions I want to ask you. Yeah. And then the second part is, you know, like I've, I've seen that picture on Google, something similar and where it, where it looks like, the bottom of it is um, some sort of like inverse hill, right? Like like a muddy, I don't know if that's uh, the best. Yeah. You I know mean, what that, I'm talking. The, the bottom, we just, I mean, come on, this bottom in particular is was wood. Right, exactly. So, so no, no, I'm no, just... no, the bottom, we, we have no idea what's below it. Just, you know, any model that shows what's below the, the general surface, we have no idea what it is. Because okay. science doesn't know what it is, and, and which was one of the things, and sorry, let me back up really quick. Mm -hmm. No one in flat earth, so it's it's actually the opposite of confirmation bias, meaning everybody hates flat earth to start, especially me. I used to con collect antique globes. I was really weird. I was an unusual nerd. I would literally ca collect antique globes. I was fascinated with them back in the day. Everybody starts out hating flat earth and then oh, trying to disprove it. In fact, the t-shirt literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it. It's like I seriously, I look. I would look at this. All you have to do is take this into a room, and and people look. Oh, that's dumb. That's stupid. And then you start staring at it, right? It's like, hey, that's not bad. Hmm. Uh -huh. You know, and, and the more you stare at it, the the more you start going into it. But so uh, everything that shows uh, under whatever is underneath it is speculation, because the deepest hole ever drilled from mainstream science is only eight miles, which is weird, right? Supposedly, if the Earth is uh, what seven thousand, well. We'll round up to eight thousand, which means it's four thousand miles to the uh, the center of the Earth if you drilled straight down, supposedly, right? And and then and you've seen the cross sections, right? We've seen the cross sections of the Earth, what it looks like these perfect one thousand mile thick bands, and then and no one no one even questions. It's like, well, how do you know that's what they look like? Because you go into Wiki, the the Wiki page is said, yeah, we have no idea what's down there. We're just speculating from volcanoes, right? The, and I, because I tell people, I go, really, what's the deepest hole drilled? Is it half that? Is it 2,000 miles? Is it 1,000 miles? Is it 100? Is it 10? No, it's eight miles. And they tried for decades, the Germans and the Russians especially, they just hammered on it, hammered on it, could not get past eight miles. So why do you keep showing us the cross section of the earth when you only, when it's only eight miles deep? So, so when everyone says, oh, yeah, what's below, you know, what's below this? What's below flat earth? It's like, I don't know. Science doesn't know what's below you. They did, in fact, the, the globe models you see in science books should just be a globe with a big question mark in the middle. But they'll never do that because science hates that. They hate question marks. So they quietly just remove the small text, which used to say, yeah, we're just speculating on what exactly is down there. And now people just say, well, that's what it looks like. And no, again, the, the question is like, why do you, you know what, let me, let me throw the George Orwell quote, quote at you, which I love. George Orwell, you know, who wrote 1984 back in the day was not a flat earther, but he was fascinated in how pe why people believed things. And I remember in 1946, where he said, he, he wrote in a thing, he was interesting, you go out any street that you want and ask people, how do you know it's a globe? Really? How do you know? And they would say, they just knee jerk response, people because of the globe in the classroom, they go, well, what are you talking about? We know it's a globe. It's a globe. It's like, really? How do you know? And that's what he was trying to get. He said, when you press them on it, all of a sudden it's like, oh, crap. I don't know. I was told. Because remember, 1946, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. How did everybody in the world in 46 know it was a globe? And, and again, you have to really spin your wheels back. It's like, oh, the Greeks. Like, really? What about the Greeks? The average person doesn't know anything about the Greeks or any of the experiments with, with wells and sticks and shadows. So, so how, does that, how does that happen? So... Sorry. Okay, so if I was to go with what you're saying, right, which is like people should question their beliefs. How do you know? Why do you believe what you believe, right? So right. could someone argue that the flat earth theory, granted, this is a hypothetical model of what the flat earth might look like, right. but is it possible to say that 
flat earthers are saying that you guys don't believe it's necessarily a globe, right? right. Or but there there's a there's a there's a higher chance that the earth is most likely flat. There you go. There perfect. Which is Th that's what could, you're trying to say. Yes, which what I'm saying is could this model be wrong? Sure, it could be. What I be I'm a huge believer in good writing. When it, I don't care if it's a television show or a movie or just a straight up book, I am a big believer in writing and plot holes. If you know what a plot hole is, that means something happens along the way, and we've all seen it in bad shows where it's like, when how did they get to that? You know, when it, that's awfully convenient, or that doesn't make sense, or wait a minute, wasn't that person dead like ten minutes ago? You know, that sort of thing, right? What I'm saying is the plot holes in this, right? Plot holes in this are far, far fewer than the pot, plot holes in the globe. And it doesn't matter really what model you believe in. I, I know we'll talk about the other models in a second here, which is the, and I and that's really what gets most people. And that is when you look, everyone tries to look at the globe first and they say, okay, the globe's gotta be true. And again, you lean on NASA and the space programs because, well, it's like, well, they're up there unless you're saying that's a lie, right? And, but the more you look at it, the more you realize there's, there's loose threads and there's plot holes there. And the more you're staring, it's like, Ooh, there's some production issues. If that's the case, I mean, come on, the Apollo program, the moon program has not aged well, not to mention no one's even attempted to go back since 1972, which is a long, long time in space terms. So if that's the, and then we, again, you, you could put them on the same scale, right? Flat earth on one side, the globe on the other. The globe has so many inconsistencies in it, in terms of its design, in far as what we can prove compared to the, to the flat, the, the flat model. And that's what gets most people. It's like, well, it's easier to understand, and there seem to be less problems with it. Therefore, I'm going to go with the easier option. Which, and I know, get I know you'll probably say, you know, well, just because it's easy doesn't mean it's right. Well, true, but people love easy. Uh, one of our content creators, Jaronism, which I love, he says, he, he, one of his one of my favorite quotes from him was, "You want to know how to make a lot of money? Find a way to make people lazier." And I'm not saying that flat earth makes people lazy, but it is a far, far easier model to understand than the globe. It doesn't take advanced calculus or trig or quantum mechanics or any of that stuff, right? Some basic geometry or some algebra. That's really all it takes. And people, it resonated with a whole bunch of people. We Our, our membership is huge now by comparison. And it, which why I put the challenge out to science. I go, you're, you're going to have to come up with an easier way to explain the solar system or we're going to end up winning by attrition. Which means we're just going to absorb all the people that are <laughs> anyway. That sorry, don't believe that. Um. So okay. So first of all, I think for most people, nobody can ever go out of space and like go high enough to see what the Earth looks like. So yes, I guess by that I can see why people might be defaulting to the flat Earth theory. But yep. Yep. when you look through a telescope right we right. and and you see the stars you see the moon mm. you see other planets then what are we looking at right you are, like you are, what do you what I does the flat earth community think I about you, that I you. mm -hmm. I've won, you're not you're probably not old enough to have ever been to a planetarium you're like what 23 something like that so <laughs> when you when, when but if you've ever been to a planetarium right uh, which is, if you guys don't know, it's an old school type thing. We've had them whew, for a long time where you sit on your back and you just, and they project the stars and the moon on the ceiling, right? And they've gotten better over the years. Uh, Neil Tyson actually runs one uh, on the East Coast. Uh, and, and they fell out of favor after a while because kids, it was boring for kids. So what they would do is kids would get super high and then they would do, do laser shows on the, on the ceilings. So on the weekends, they do like laser Floyd and laser Zeppelin and, and all that stuff and, and. So, but it's, but it's light on the ceiling. Imagine this. Imagine if you, I, I know you probably don't know any Amish people who does, but Amish people don't believe really in anything, right? They just, they, they treat their world like it's the 1800s. They don't want to have do, anything to do with modern civilization. They make their own clothes. They make their own homes. They use a freaking you know, horse end buggy, right? Imagine, but they know about what's going on in the world, right? Imagine if you had one of those groups where they really didn't interact with the cities at all right didn't didn't come into trade imagine you blindfolded one of them and took them to a planetarium right took that blindfold off it'd blow their freaking minds he's like why is what is what is happening the stars should not be out and and the moon why is it moving so fast and and stuff like that right you remember that's just a, a small simulation or again take a stupid cell phone right take it back even 150 years you'd get burned at the stake for being a witch 
Okay. So when it comes to the, and, and well, sorry, I must clarify here. We had nothing to do with the building of this place, right? We, we have some amazing engineering capabilities, but hey, come on, we can't even replicate the pyramids. And that supposedly was only like 5,000 years ago. I don't buy it. I've been to the pyramids. It's, it's a freak show. You look at it. It's like, how in the hell did they build that? But if we didn't build it, that, that might be one of your follow-up questions. Whoever built it has m so much engineering skill that can, could you produce a planetarium that was thousands of miles wide and a few thousand miles high and include a giant floating nightlight of a moon and a light bulb, which is the sun? Sure. I, I think it could be done, but that's all you're looking at. Whatever's in the sky, whatever you see up there is just lights on a ceiling. If we are in uh, a sound stage, you were looking at a special effect. And night and it and it's great because and because people say what about space? It's like why would you have to have space? Like remember, if you're in a Hollywood studio, why why do you have to have anything outside the studio? Everything's inside it. Uh, one more thing, really fast. Uh, you ever been to Disneyland? No, but I really want to go. So ah, like on okay, my well, there's list. a ride. I've been on to that. Universal. Okay, well, close enough. <laughs> but there's a there's an old ride. It's one of the early rides on Disneyland called Pirates of the Caribbean. That's by the way where the movies came from. One of the freakiest things was they they made an entire movie franchise not off of, off of a book, not off of any story series, off a freaking ride at at Disney. Right? Talk about um pure profit, right? Because you didn't have to pay IP rights to anybody. So, but but the end of that ride, you pull it, you, you know, your little floating boat thing goes into an area which simulates a Car Caribbean harbor with a boat fire with a pirate ship firing off in the distance. And you know, it's real water. And you know, it's, a, and it's like, but you have, but because of perspective and how human beings believe, you know, we, we are so vulnerable to illusions all day long. Well, you know, we trickery, especially our visual, when you're looking at there, I challenge anybody. It's like, tell me how far that pirate ship is uh, off in the distance. Right. And tell me how big it is. You have no idea. It's done that well. And think about this. That pirate ship is firing off in the distance. That's just wood and paint and a few lights. Think of what you could do with modern technology. So, I'm sorry, long-winded answer to everything on, Everything you see in the sky is just part of the stage. That's it. Okay, so if, but the thing is, if we're living in a planetarium, right? well, first of all, that's scary, right? No, I've heard, it not have to be scary. It, it is ahead. to me a little bit. You know why? Because why? I've heard people say, and I think I might have, you know, heard you say this as well, where, you know, when we think about be floating on this rock right. in this vast universe, in this, in this like, you know, space, it seems like we're just kind of like a blip in creation, right? Like we right. don't matter, sure. but like flat earthers will say like flat earth kind of gives us a little bit more um it makes us feel like we matter a little bit more right absolutely and another thing that i think about too like a lot of flat earthers are like devout christians right and like mm -hmm. when we think about god right and creation so who created this flat earth right because right. if you're saying we're living in a planetarium and it's more like some sort of simulation that we're living in that we're not aware of right. that doesn't it, it comes to me like it comes off like intelligent beings created yeah. flat earth that we're yeah. living on and created the simulation, not yeah. necessarily the God we think about, but then that's in direct contradiction to being a Christian. So how do you guys reconcile yeah. that? All right. All right. Um, first let's, let's get the obvious out of the way. Um, yes, there are a lot of Christians in flat earth, uh, at least in the United States, right? At, at least half of our membership in the United States are, are strong Christians. Now, Flat Earth does not exclude any of the other four, uh, you know, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and, and Islam. But but Christianity definitely is at the forefront. You know, they they tend to latch onto this because of the some of the stories in the Bible. In fact, one of my my friends, the um the late Rob Skiba, well, with a wonderful website called testingtheglobe.com, he was one of the first people to call me up in 2015 when he built that site. And he and he said, dude, he goes, it's a flat Earth book. He goes, the whole thing screams flat earth, except for one verse, one verse and one verse only. And he goes, there's pastors holding on to it like grim death, holding on to that verse, because if they don't, they know their congregation might turn against them. Uh, but as far as who, you know, who who built it at that point? Yes, the, it's not a contradiction, but it does lead into a question, which is, OK, did God, you know, God, capital G proper build this or did he subcontract out the work? 
I would tend that he that he subcontracted out of the work, uh, but that doesn't mean necessarily that we're in a bad place. I still think it's way more comfortable that instead of you know us being on this tiny little rock that be snuffed out in a universe at, at any given point, that we may be sitting in one of these. And by the way, I would imagine there's a lot more than just one. One of these sitting on God's workshop, right? It just means that it was built deliberately, purposefully for you. And yes, it screams intelligent design, which is why a lot of church groups really latched on to it. In fact, I, uh, I remember a conference some years ago where they said that Flat Earth as a recruiting tool for the church was being used very, very effectively because people that had even fallen away from the church, including me, for example, um, let's say they were 90% sure in the whole God creation thing. When they got into flat earth, they now notched it up to like 95, 96%. You're saying, well, that's only five or 6%. Well, that's kind of the big, it's a big jump in the, in the world of belief. And that is because yes, if it is shaped like this, well, then it screams intelligent design. This doesn't happen on accident, right? A globe, you can kind of, you know, play off. It's like, oh, some sort of random physics thing that happens. You know, we're left over from the Big Bang. But when it comes to, you know, a snow globe, well, that's a structure, right? Not an accidental structure. And there's a lot of little design things in this, which scream intelligence that this does not happen by accident, which means it was put here for a reason. And if you're in it, then you are here for a reason. And that gives a lot of people comfort, which is why, which is why, by the way, uh, I, I don't want to, um, uh, slap gender roles on there, but that's why we have more women in our circle of things. In, in the truther community, there are more women in Flat Earth than a, all probably all the others combined. And that is because it's a message of hope, which is it's not one of those dark, sinister conspiracies where everyone talks like this and they should overthrow the government. And, you know, everyone talks like Batman. And it's not, but that's not the case. You know, people look, they, they look at it because I ask women, I go, why are you here at this conference? Why are you here? It's not because of me. Why are you here? And they say, well, because it's it's the it, there's a real uplifting thing about flat Earth, and that is it's deliberate. Sorry. Yeah. So, but then if it's, if it's deliberate and it's yeah. kind of like a simulation, it feels like prison a little bit to me. Really? Um, that's how I th I'm trying to understand what the hope is. What hope are they latching to if they believe that it is a flat Earth? And like you said, maybe you know, it was subcontracted to more intelligent beings, right? right? So then that that brings in the the talk of aliens, right? Uh -huh. Um, being potentially seated on this planet by aliens, right? So how does that provide hope rather got than it, got it. Well, being one, put it, in a simulation? It, one, it even changes the definition of aliens, which is okay, now aliens take on a whole different perspective. Before it was like, oh, they're from Mars or Jupiter or Venus or you know, the Motari Nebula or wherever, right? But now it's like, oh, no, 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 no. The question now becomes, have they been here with us all along? Meaning are the, because I, when I look at the old civilizations, you don't necessarily have to watch every episode of Ancient Aliens to figure this out. But I mean, if you look at the remnants, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, um, Machu Picchu, Puma Punku, the real pyramids, the Bos Bosnian pyramids and so on and so on, we can tell pretty obviously that we're not the first people to rent this apartment question is what happened to those other civilizations and if they are remnants around here there seems to be rules that, that that are tied to it meaning those every civilization i think has a certain amount of time here on this world you know even our unbroken history only goes back what five thousand years give or take that's not a lot in, in the grand scheme of things and we can tell some of these civilizations go back way 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 before us the question and so when it comes to aliens, do I think there's something sinister behind it? Because it's like, And you say, well, could it be like a prison planet? Yeah, it could. I mean, there's, this world can only be one of three things, right? It can either be um, entertainment, which is like, well, it's not really that entertaining. There's a lot of people that aren't having fun. Could be a prison, but it's like, yeah, but if it's a prison, it's an awfully pretty prison. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful places in this world. I mean, come on, if you take the people off of this world, it works pretty good on its own, which is a whole line from the Matrix, which is, you know, we're the only group that doesn't seem to blend with nature. I kind of treat it as school, believe it or not, which is kind of a mix. Uh, you know, school has that, uh, yeah, school's so sometimes a prison, but sometimes you're having fun, but it's limited, but at the end you got to leave, right? And which is, I think that every civilization is kind of like the senior class, which is once you're done, once you're done, I think we're getting kind of close. We've kind of run out of things to do recently. And things are kind of auguring south. I, I would like to say in a good way. 
because I think at the end, every class has to graduate. And by that, I mean, you know, this, which is once you graduate, you don't go back to school, which means you can't interact with like, it's like, yeah, yeah, you don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. And you can't interact. You can't come back to school and hang out in the schoolyard and mess with the freshman classes and everybody else. We have new classes coming up. And so I think there are rules tied to this place, very strong, strict rules, which most of the older civilizations, which I call the aliens. So when you say aliens, I just say there's older versions of us, previous versions. If you want to look and I, I know you don't know this one, but I got to throw this out for your listeners, which is look up the, the greatest alien encounter of all kind. It wasn't Roswell. It wasn't 1899 Aurora. It was 1561 Nuremberg, Germany. It's, there's a whole wiki page de de designated to that where these giant space armadas came out of nowhere and fought over this big city in Germany on a beautiful cloudless day and hammered on each other all, all for an hour. And then finally another faction came in and got them out of there. It's like, okay, who are these first two guys? Who are this? Who's the third? Were they the cops? Were they the UN? Whatever. And they sketched the whole thing. Remember, there was no cameras back in 5061, but they drew the whole thing in great detail. So the, I think there's rules to this place. But, and that goes into the question by, of aliens, which is one of the oldest scientific questions there is, which is, okay, if there's aliens, then why hasn't one landed in the middle of Kansas, right? It's like, well, think of what would happen if that is the case, right? Some giant golden spaceship lands in the middle of Kansas City, right? Okay, the disruption would be insane, right? You'd have people out there going, well, they do look like the people from Avatar or the other people would be like, we must worship the churches would pop up you know you would change religion almost overnight we must worship the blue people yes you know and and, and it's like who are you to criticize the blue wars would start over this right it's it's straight out of star trek as the prime directive so i think the do i think there are other alien civilizations by loosely saying the word aliens yes i do do i think they're sinister yeah not really because we, we haven't exactly been enslaved as a group right which we talked about in science fiction movies but uh do i think they're part of it yes do i think that capital g god oversees the whole thing yes but i also think he's got more than one of these to worry about so right there you go so Sorry. going back to the dome yeah is it solid or is it gas that is a wonderful question because I think it's solid in the in the aspect that we couldn't break through it. And you can look this up. This is public knowledge, which was when the United States and Soviet Union, back in the day when we were the only ones with atomic weapons, I don't care if you don't believe in atomic weapons or not, that's a whole other rabbit hole, which is, we'll just call them big bombs, right? Well, which is why I use the word atomic instead of uh, uh, nuclear. I'm trying not to say nuclear because that's, everyone bitches at me when I when I slip into that. Because remember, the short version of nuclear is nuke, which is spelled wrong. It's spelled N-U-K-E. When it's like, okay, what's the plural version? Now? Oh, N-U-K-U-L-A-R. It's like, nope, that's not it. Anyway, so when, back when uh, they were doing atomic testing, all of a sudden, for whatever reason, both sides decided to change their tactics, and they were firing nukes straight up into the sky for four years they did this imagine that soviet union and the americans for whatever reason were firing nukes straight up for four years and we're talking medium kiloton weapons in, in the in the triple digits and uh, low megaton which was almost unheard of at the time four years they were trying to bust through the the, the sky and i think what happened was once the first ones because you look the first ones were megaton once they couldn't bust through with the megatons, like, oh, we don't have anything bigger than that. I think they were just using the, the weapons to pretty much paint the sky and map out the angle of, of where this thing was. Because remember, then you're going to have to fake a, fake a space program and you can't fire off the rockets too, too straight up because eventually they're going to crash into something. So, sorry, solid. That's the short answer to your, what, what you're, the, the questions you want. Now, do you say, oh, okay, what could it be made out of? I don't know. That's dealer's choice, meaning it could it be a force field, could it be an electromagnetic field, a unified field, a heavy metal, heavy element. I don't know, but whatever it is, we can't get through it. But remember, that's a man thing, right? It's like men immediately. It's like, hey, there's a wall there. Get the cannon, right? That's that's all they'd want to do is see if they could bust through it. And we couldn't do it for four years. Best, best in the world. Couldn't bust through it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another thing, too, is that it, I, I think in order to believe and go with the flat earth, earth theory you would have to consistently ignore or avoid all of the other evidence for why we live on a globe right so i mean i'm not a scientist but for example we have the study of astronomy 
we have astrology, right? Yep. Which looks at the planets, the star systems and all of that. So yeah. are, are you just saying that people are, are hallucinating and just making that up? No, 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 no. We believe what, we... Uh, you know, I'm going to use a line from the Truman Show again. If you haven't watched it, it's a, it's a great one, which is we believe the world that is presented to us. Um, we have, it's how many times, I mean, magic shows will do this, which is why one of the clues was called the magic show. We all, all day long, which is okay. So if you went to a planetarium and you looked up on the ceiling, I've had people come, they, I've, I've had people say, oh, I can see the moons of Jupiter with my telescope. That's astronomy, right? That's just one part of astronomy. I go, really? Okay, fine. Take a pair of binoculars into a planetarium. Look up Jupiter. Yeah. This looks spherical. Yeah. See it with your binoculars. Yeah. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just a light on the ceiling. Who's to say when you don't walk out of that, that planetarium, you're just not in a much, much bigger planetarium. Imagine this. I know, again, this predates you, but imagine showing an HD television, just a stupid HD television to somebody 50 years ago. Blow their minds. Freaking blow their minds because it looks so real. I, I remember when, you, when we transitioned over. You know, people, we'd, people, I'd watch people in the, in the electronic stores just staring. You know, older people, it's like, what? What is this magical box? So when it comes to astronomy and astrophysics, think about this. Astronomy is just viewing the sky. That's it, right? With, with your telescopes. That's all it is, right? And astrophysics is the math behind it trying to define what's happening up there. You stare at anything long enough and be like, yeah, you can, you can, you can make up your own equations for it. What I think is more interesting, and again, you or your listeners can look this up as well. Go into Google and type in ancient cosmologies. And click on images and see what happens. You will see everybody drew the same thing. It doesn't matter what culture it was. And these are cultures that had no interaction with each other, most of them anyway, covering all sorts of different time periods. And they all drew the same thing. They drew a snow globe. Why? Were they all completely wrong? Well, no, it was because the stars were, stars were sort of curving over the sky. They weren't moving, the stars were. Which is one of our arguments, which is astronomy and astrophysics say, we're you know the stars aren't moving we're moving and we come back and say really why do you think that because you're the only group that's ever said that science and nasa it's brilliant and and again i think it's also been deliberate which is i think this world was as you saw with the ancient cosmologies you know everybody drew the same thing eventually you you have to turn it into a globe let's go into a bigger theory here which is eventually the people are going to figure it out because remember the technology and we didn't even figure it out until almost 1960 because we didn't have pressurized aircraft. We didn't have decent engines. Remember, we haven't even had engines until the 1900, right? So if that's the case, eventually you want, because if people figure out by the time we have engines, right, that the world, if they still think that it's, it's a snow globe, they're going to head straight for the edge. So what do you do? You turn it into a globe and say, oh, it doesn't matter where you go. You're not going anywhere because you're in space. You go round and round like an ant on an apple, right? He's not going anywhere. He's never leaving the apple. And most people bought it and it, and it worked. It was great. You heard as above, so below, correct? Sure. sure. So if, if we're based on that principle, right. when you think about if you, if you say that we're um, like we have that cover on top of the flat earth, right? then there has to be an inverse of that, right? Or we are one of these inside a bigger one of these inside a bigger one of those. Kind of like so, a Russian, like a Russian stacking doll. Doesn't have to be. And would that be inside of, okay, so if we go with that theory, right, we're okay. inside like a Russian stacking doll. So that means the first, like the ultimate one, right, which right. you know how like you keep opening it up until sure. you get to the bigger one. Yeah. Um so would that one be the globe? Okay. The, one of the schools of thought is this. And again, you're, the only reason you're even saying globe is because you're still hanging on to space because for your 23 years of life, all you cared about is the globe, right? I mean, you've been shown the globe so many times in school and so many movies. I mean, come on, Star Trek, Star Wars, Stargate, yeah. Battlestar Galactica, that that's all, that, that's all, you know, all your mind is, is used to, which is fine. But to, I'll be fair to your point, which is, yes, it is either one of these, right? Or, but again, then you're splitting hairs, or it's one of these that's sitting on a globe that's a million times bigger than it is. But then again, why would you even be thinking about a globe? 
I say it's one of these sitting inside one of these, which is sitting inside one of these. But and you're saying, well, okay, what's outside of this? And it's like, well, I try not to delve too much into worlds I can't get to. All I know is we're we're trapped in here and we can't go anywhere. And, but I do think it's deliberate. Sorry, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. No, I I hear what you're saying. I mean, like I said before, like when I was younger. Yeah. I mean, granted, a lot younger. I I would picture the Earth as flat with me trying to conceptualize what I was on with what I could see, right? right? Right. But then if you would look at ancient civilization, they were probably trying to do the same thing, right? And came up with those diagrams right. that seemed closer to what you have with the flat earth. But then the telescope was invented, right? And when it first when the when it was first proposed that wait, maybe the earth is in flat, that sounded it's kind of like the reverse of what's happening today, right? right. Where everybody was like, that is just blasphemy. That's impossible. Right. But then, you know, I I one of the things that I'm fascinated by is like, again, why do people believe what they believe and how can you prove something is true? Right. right. I right. think there's subjective truth, right. which I think a lot of subjective truth comes from personal experience, right? Because not everyone is in your mind. And right. then there's objective truth that could be measured, that can be measured, and there's sure. evidence for it. So I, I keep going back to like, you know, the globe thing, not just because I was told that, but like a lot of the science that we have today mm -hmm. and a lot of the evidence that we have today point to the fact that the earth is a sphere. Spherical. It's spherical. right. Yeah. Right. It's spherical sure. versus the, the when I talk to flat earthers, it seems like they're just ignoring the science and the the math. I would disagree strongly in that it's not that we were ignoring the science. We are, again, what I, what I mentioned a little bit ago, which was we are looking at the plot holes in science. I'll give you, I'll give you a great example. And, and part of it is because the general, well, let's use the Americans. The Americans' education system does not focus on science at all. And I think it's deliberate. I think it's, I think it's tied to this, which is, think about what, the groups in your school. Football, big. Band, big. You know, whatever. ASB, really big. Science club, small. Physics club, small. Math, chess. In fact, they're all the same guys, right? It's all this, the same 15 guys and in, in all this. But when it comes to science, here's, here's the problem with science. Science has morphed into, as technology has gotten better, has morphed into basically their own religion, which we call scientism. And I'll give you a plot hole. I'll just give you one plot hole when it comes to this. And here's what I mean. Meaning science will, will throw at you, uh, well, you know, two, two real quick. One is Neil deGrasse Tyson will tell you that the, the, I'm surprised you haven't brought up gravity yet, which is Neil deGrasse Tyson will, was fond of saying this on television. He goes, yeah, just so you know, gravity is a theory. He goes, he goes, we can't tell you what gravity is. Any scientist will tell you this. We can only tell you what it does, right? We drop something, it falls to the ground. Oh yeah, we can we can show you the symptoms of gravity all day long, but we can't replicate it. We can't create it artificially. So we'll just kind of we kind of bypass that. Why do I mention that? Here's why. You can look this up, and again, the movies do us do us no favors. Which is in the movies, you have the you know, when you're a spaceship, you have the vacuum outside. Remember, vacuum is nothing. Meaning, so all this nitrogen and 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 oxygen that you're breathing in right now, which you can't see. A vacuum is nothing. It's emptiness. And I know it's tough for, for most people to understand because visually a room with no air in it looks exactly the same that a room with air in it, right? That equalization, meaning if you, if you take a vacuum chamber, and you can look at this up all day long and, and deep sea oil rigs and submarines. And like, when you equalize a room, pressure versus non-pressure, it is extremely instant. It's a fraction of a second. It's violent and it's brutal, right? The movies all do the same thing, right? A spaceship gets a hole and it. it's like, oh my God, we only got two minutes of air left. And they float around, get the duct tape, right? Oh, no, no, no. Everybody's dead instantly, right? If that was the case, I mean, it's a fraction of a second and it's it's horrifying. But in the movies, it's like, well, we can't really show that. So let's, you know, the, the, the old saying, and this hopefully will resonate with you, which is the one of the first rules of media, which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story, right? So if you had a vacuum chamber right above you and you had a valve and you yanked on it, the air in your room would knife upwards and instantly. Heck, you may even go in upstairs. You may even die, right? Why do I mention that? When you go outside, the atmosphere of our world is still here. 
even though it's sitting right next to the biggest vacuum chamber ever. Why? Right? And then your your knee-jerk response and the trolls that it will inevitably invade your comment section, they'll say, they'll say, gravity, gra it has to be gravity. I'll go, really? The gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room from going upstairs. Same gravity. But outside, oh no, it's holding it all. Is there, and in fact, I almost had a physics student, a guy had a master's working on his PhD. He, goes, he almost said it. He was like, yeah, but there's more. And I said, what, more gravity? More gravity outside than there is inside in your room? Oh, I'd like to I'd like to hear how you work that out. That's just one aspect of science. Again, it's not that we're ignoring science. We look at science and we, and, and we'll, trust me, when I say, we look at science and we're like, and we look at it really hard. And then we're like, that makes no sense. And then we, in fact, we ask science, like, go explain that to us. Kind of like, you know, the, the astronaut um, suit thing. You know, I, I, I put a challenge out there for four years. I said, loan me one of your astronaut suits, put me in a vacuum chamber, pull the switch. Tell me how, tell me what happens. Tell me how I live. No one will even touch it. And it's like, I, I mean, I could even, I could prove a vacuum chamber to anybody with like $4 worth of materials. You can't mm. just put me in a chamber by that. That would be the, the great trick, which is put me in a vacuum chamber and say, oh, you're in a vacuum. It's like, oh, really? Because this little bell here ling, 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 can't make a sound in a vacuum. The, the simulation theory, which I love, by the way, you know, actual simulation matrix, 13th floor and, and other movies type thing. I love that entire concept, but most people don't understand it because it's tech based. So, but I came from the video game world. I played video games for a living. I was a video game producer. You know, I, I know where the industry is going. I know where it, where it came from. And everything about this world screams virtual. And by the way, I'm not denying God when I say that. I'm saying God's a programmer, a very, very good programmer. Uh, but this place screams virtual reality, the double slit experiment, neuroscience versus free will. Uh, every, there's, there are so many little things about this world. Hell, even the hundredth monkey effect is is just screams virtual as far as software updates go but but i can't bring it up i will here i'll give you a quick example um the matrix now is what 25 years old most people did and i remember when it came out in the theater back in 1999 most people still don't get it even now so for me to bring up flat earth that's that's i that is the lowest common denominator theme i can come up with because all the simulations that we build, you may or may not know, I don't know if you've ever played a game in your life, they're all flat. They're all freaking flat. And because all the developers, because they're lazy, because I know developers, it's like, why would I make a globe? Freaking make it flat. Why? Because they say no one's going to know the difference. I can make a world as big as I want. Most people would never, ever question it with whether there was a curve on that world. And so the it's it's literally, in fact, the, the, the graphics, this ties into the sky, the graphics on any game, I don't care if it's Fortnite or GTA or Warcraft or whatever it is, uh, the, it's called the skybox system. It's not a dome in the virtual world. It's it's literally a, a rectangle that, uh, that's, that's cornered off because machines, sorry, last, last part of this, which was machines hate drawing spheres and they hate drawing circles. They don't know how. That's why pixels are squares, right? Or rectangles. So something I have to ask you, right, is that, yeah. you know, with a lot of things, you have people who you can have a bunch of flat earthers, but you guys don't all agree on the same thing, right? right. Even down to what the flat earth could potentially look like. But right. a lot of people have accused um, the flat earth society, other flat earthers that are not part of the flat earth society right. as being kind of planted by the government, right? right. Um, and you're one of the people who, who's targeted in that line of thinking. Yeah. Um, so what do you say to those people who feel like you're a secret government operative here to actually make flat earthers look less credible than they actually are? Okay, yeah. The Okay, well, let's address the flat earth society first, and then we'll address me, which was uh, the flat earth society. In fact, it's funny because, somewhat ironic, that I was one of the, I was the first guy that that actually told people that the flat earth society because remember when i was doing it back in 2014 and 2015 the i i joined them i jo i signed up you know it's like hey I've, i still got my card in the other room and and i realized really fast because i was like i was like I, well is there anybody i can talk to about this besides i didn't want to necessarily go solo and the people that were running the velvet rope outside the flat earth society in terms of the the forums the forum moderators were trolls at the very least. They were trolls and they were just saying, nothing to see here, it's not real, go away. 
over and over and over again. It's like, well, that's kind of odd. It's like, uh, you're not exactly encouraging membership what, by you're doing this. And that's all they did. They just hung out in front. Now, years later, I know that we have dedicated troll channels on YouTube that come out against this and they make a living basically attacking us on a, on a regular basis. So at the very least, it was lazy and there, was tr and there were trolls that were running the, the front door of the Flyer Society. At worst, they were low-level agents that because of my talk about an easy gig you wouldn't these guys would not be being paid a lot of money you could you could have interns do this just hey just sat, sit in front of the, the the flat earth society website and just tell people to go away worst worst thing ever and so and and so i told people this but then it circled back on me because years later people are like you joined the flat earth society you must be a shill you know you must you must be a co co intel guy and it's like I was the guy that told you not to go there. I go, I, I, in fact, I told you I joined so that I could, I was the guy that, that informed you what it was like. And now you're coming back. You, did you forget that I joined? It's like, oh, I didn't know it was you. It's like, uh, you know, it's the telephone game all over again. The gossip, gossip chain never, never changes. As far as me, oh, there was one of our, one of our bigger guys, uh, an American that was living in Thailand. I don't know where he is now. Um, a guy by the name of Eric Dubay. He came out back when there was only a few of us. It, lots of people don't like sharing the spotlight. He does not play well with others. And and I remember his people reaching out to me saying, hey, you need to really, kind of like prison. <laughs> you, you need to join Eric's gang, right? Or or we're coming after you. True to their word, they absolutely came after me. And, and in this case, well, it's not like they were going to beat me up, but they were going to try to discredit me. And so they put the rumor out there. It's like, oh, Mark is a government agent. And... With no no proof, right? Again, as you know, in the world of media, <laughs> rumors spread way faster than truth. And by the time you reel it back, it doesn't matter. Most of the people will listen to the rumor. And to this day, every couple of months, I get somebody that emails me and says, hey, are you an agent? It's like, if I was an agent, one, could I tell you? And two, should you actually be emailing me on your normal email if that's the case? Because now I'm tracking you. Whatever. So, yeah. No, no. What? I've been doing this for, but let me clarify this really fast. I've been doing this for nine years and just to, in fact, to make sure that to, to minimize that whole concept, I, you probably how you found me. I put all my contact information online. It never changed except for my street address. And I put it out that women should never, ever, ever do that anyway. But I got away with it because I was a guy and put it out there forever and people can reach out all the time. In fact, I got a couple phone calls while I was talking to you. And... If I was going to, again, if, if I was an agent, what's my game plan? I've been doing it for nine years. What, what sort of long game am I doing? I've never turned anybody in a different direction. I've always, you know, held the, the belief of flat earth. I've never gone against flat earth. So if I was and say, oh, make flat earth stupid. How, how have I made flat earth look stupid compared to who? Sorry, compared to whom have mm -hmm. I, have I made people look stupid? Sorry. There you go. No, you're, you're right. And speaking of long game let's just say that we get to a point where most of the population are flat earthers yeah right because what would happen like what what does the flat earth society what are they hoping to achieve right because sometimes it comes off like a almost like i don't want to say religion because that might be oh, you dramatic. can say cult you can say yeah it. like it, it comes off a little like a, a cult right where it's like it's it's like this is what we believe and we're trying to recruit as many people as possible because it's one thing to believe something yeah. and it's another thing to i think recruiting is a huge thing like so 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 i just kind of want to know why is it so important to recruit people into the, this community and second of all if most people end up becoming flat earthers what does that mean what what what's going to change gotcha one of us one of us yeah, well, yeah. After this, uh, I'll make sure uh, I'll give you some pamphlets, uh, and and you can. There's, there's. We have several compounds in the United States, other in Europe, and a few in China. Uh, no, no. We have to give up most of your worldly possessions. There's robes. There's chanting, and stuff like. No, no. It's none of that. However, as far as goals, oh, that's a tough one because I don't even know if any flat earther. I mean, yeah. The the goal right now. If you asked anybody, the T-shirt the would be just spread the word, spread the word, spread the word. Not necessarily recruiting. You know, we don't drag anybody and do anything. In fact, uh, I tell people, I'll, I'll tell your audience right now, look, I'm not here to persuade you or convince you. I'm here to put an idea in your head. You, the reason why we have a 99% retention rate, which is higher than any organized religion by a long shot, is because you're the one that tore down the globe. 
we didn't do it. In fact, they even talked about that in the movie. If you're the one, we just put the idea in your head and you crack open the globe on your own in your own spare time. You can there's at that point you have no fingers to point at. You can't point at me and say that's your fault that I screwed up and my marriage is failing and people at work think I'm crazy. It's like, no, no, it's not me. You did that. It's like, yeah, I, I gave you the idea, but I just whispered it in your ear. I call it the um uh, sometimes affectionately the uh, the flatter drug deal. Which is, you know, I'm the guy in the corner with a whole bunch of conspiracies, and it's like, oh yeah. Yeah, what 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 are you what are you, what are you into? You know, I got something. I don't give this to just anybody. I, I give it to only my special, my special people. Don't do it, don't do, don't do all of it right now. Just don't do too much. But if you do this, your mind will be super, super open. But I warn people also. I also say, but I'll, I'll get to the goal here in a second. But I warn people, I say, and I, I'm not kidding. It was a, literally the first line in uh, my second book. I said, if you wake up every day and you think everything is awesome, life is great, right? Don't do it. Don't look at flat earth. And this isn't reverse psychology where I say, whatever you do, don't think about elephants, right? And then immediately you start thinking about elephants. This isn't that. This is like, no, 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 no. Flat Earth has a red pill, blue pill factor to it, where if you go down far enough, you're not coming back out. You, there's nothing you can do. You will be like Cypher in the Matrix. It's like, why, why didn't I take the blue pill? Because you there's there's you don't know what to do. You, can, you can't get back into it if you want it, because you can't put the globe back together. As far as the long-term goal goes, at least for me, and I'll say it because I've been in it longer than most people, I wanted, I really hope it's the 100th mon monkey effect. Which is, if you don't know what the 100th monkey effect is, um, you know, they gave a whole bunch of monkeys off of, a, of a Japan um, potatoes. And the, some of the monkeys were washing the potatoes off in the, in the ocean because they realized, like, I don't want to eat potatoes with sand on it. And they realized slowly but surely the, the monkeys were learning from each other. But once it hit the 100th monkey, give or take, all the monkeys knew. Not just in that island, but every other island they hadn't even given potatoes to yet. It was almost like the monkeys had a mass update you know, a, a consciousness update, I call it a software update, to all, it was a beneficial update to all the monkeys simultaneously. I think that applies to all life forms. I think it applies to us, which is once we reach a certain point when, to your point, when more people believe it than don't believe it, I think at that point something special might happen. Meaning, and I'll go back to the Bible really quick, you know, we'll do the biblical thing, even though we really haven't talked about the biblical thing much, which is the, the Tower of Babel story. One of the greatest stories ever, and I'm really surprised I never made a movie on it, uh, first chapter of Genesis, right? Which is the, the whole concept of, of the Tower of Babel, of the first civilization was perfect. They were focused, they weren't diverse in any way, they were organized, they had a technology, and it's like, yeah, and they immediately, immediately realized, like, oh yeah, by the way, we know exactly where we are, we're, you know what, start building a, a tower, we're going to make a bridge straight to the top, we're going to meet God, and that's, that's the story, in a nutshell, and then God looks down, and he's like, uh, oh, nuts, <laughs> this isn't going to work out at all. And so God's like, you know what? Language, language, scatter, 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 scatter. You know, let's reset this thing. Eh, that was a wash. It was a, probably the shortest lived civilization ever, right? Imagine that, but in our version, right? If all of a sudden everybody, I think that's what every civilization has this. If they figure out where we are, I think there's an old saying, and I don't know if it's relevant, but I like the saying, it's pretty catchy. And that is when all the students are in their seats, the teacher then arrives and I think once we figure it out as a group, as a group think, I don't know what the threshold number is, but once we figure it out, I think at that point, we're kind of let in on the secret. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, that's it. Uh, you know, here's what happens. Who knows what happens then? Maybe an advanced civilization shows up. Maybe the superintendent shows up. Maybe capital G makes an appearance. Don't know. But that'd be my goal, which yeah. is something special. Why not? Because everything I've seen about Flat Earth is a positive thing. I have seen no negative things. You haven't seen us blow anything up or shoot anybody. Or, I mean, we've done, I don't know how many events. There's been no violence. No weird person has, has done anything. You know, nobody set themselves on fire, as far as I know. So I, if, if it's that positive, why not continue it? Right. Okay. So there's so many things here. Like you mentioned the biblical um, part of the conversation. And right. I know that there's one, um, a lot of people draw text from um what do you call it revelations for example um and i think i had that somewhere I, I revelation gonna... revelation yes yeah, I, right. I, I always there are, there are that. Re... no that's right everybody does there are revelations yeah. in revelation 
but yeah, it's just called revelation. revelation right. Yeah. That's a Mandela um, effect thing too, by the way. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So I know, for example, um, in Revelation 7-1, yeah. someone said uh, it speaks of the four angels four angels standing at the four corners of the earth and that's what people use a lot but it doesn't explicitly say the earth is flat right um people also point to psalm 75 3 which says god holds the pillars of the earth firm right um so there's also deuteronomy which i'm I'm pulling up right now 13 7 yeah. Um, which talks about some of the gods of the peoples who are around you, whether near you or far from you, from one end of the earth to the other, yeah. right? But uh, again, I don't know if that necessarily says that the earth is flat, because then you also look at Isa- Isaiah forty twenty two. There you go. There it is. And it says there is one, one who dwells above the circle of the earth, yep. right? Where this one is the most descriptive of right. what the earth is whereas the other ones are kind of anecdotal and people in my opinion right are interpreting it that to mean well the four corners of the earth that means the earth is flat but right. it's not explicitly using the word flat whereas in Isaiah 40 22 it literally calls the earth a circle right, right? with someone dwelling above it and, so and- just wanted to Oh no, I got those. you, and and that's perfect. That's a perfect lead-in. Um, by the way, yes, four corners of the Earth. Where is a corner on a globe? But the other thing, the circle part, and I, again, we the the biblical guys jumped on this immediately, which was circle. The technical term for circle isn't globe or sphere or ball. Globe, sphere, ball. Those are three dimensional things. You would never say it's not called a basket circle or a base circle. It's called basketball, baseball, and well, football doesn't count. So, which shouldn't be a football anyway, it's soccer, it's whatever. So, but yes, to, to, to that point, sphere, ball, globe, different in Hebrew than circle. However, love the fact, again, the, remember what I said in the beginning, where pastors hold on to Isaiah 40, 22 with their fingernails, hoping it's like, oh God. And it's like, really? So Isaiah 40, 22 has veto power over things like, I don't know, uh, Tower of Babel, which is a great one, which is if you're building a build you know a structure to heaven what how, how does that work on a globe that's just a toothpick on an orange right they're just spinning around and around where's that going it's going nowhere right one of my other favorites though besides all the the little verses and again check out testing you know the earth is fixed it's immovable constantly you know it's, it's set firm in its foundations blah 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 which is the story of joshua if you know anything about Joshua, which was he asked God, which is an interesting request, to hold the moon and the or the the sun and the the sky in place so that he could have a longer day so he could slay more enemies in God's name, right? And God did that. Well, suspending the the solar system, hitting pause on a solar system is a physics nightmare, right? It's just like, okay, we're just going to stop the entire solar system. Oh my god, it would be horrible. The oceans air the, it would be a nightmare compared to, say, just saying, pause on the sky. Well, that's easy. We do that in a planetarium all day long. You want to hold the moon right there? Yeah. Click. That's all That's all it is. So between that and all the other things, no, no, no. There, there isn't a biblical person in our community or hell, even, even outside. Outside our community, the only thing they can latch on to, again, is 4022. Isaiah 4022 circle which could be your dining room table can be a hubcap could be a dinner plate does not have veto power over the entire bible including i don't know genesis so but but the four pillars of the earth thing right to go back to that to four corners of the earth earth, isn't that just the that could just easily be north south east and west that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a it's a literal corner unless you're putting a literal interpretation to the word corner i mean i guess you can make the same argument for putting a literal interpretation to the word circle but i do think that seems a little bit more descriptive right like than just calling it the four Uh, corners of the earth however if i was going to build this here's where it gets weird right so in some of the maps including the orlando ferguson map which i love so much even though it's shaped like a roulette table and i know i'm not supposed to say roulette table because all the numbers add up to 666 
that she didn't know that and they do it's actually true it's like holy crap and i so i stopped saying it but in his map this thing was sitting in a box you know where it was it was round it was cornered off on all the ends remember engineering wise i don't care if it's software or real all engineers will tell you the same thing they like squared it off you know they like corners no which is remember the hollywood if you were going to do this in a hollywood studio you wouldn't do it like this you do this inside a giant square building so when it comes to the four corners of the earth, yes, of course they take it literally. And why wouldn't they? And you said, well, but it could be metaphorically for, you know, for the compass, north, south, east, west. Like, oh, you said, unless, it, you know, you were taking it literally. It's like, yeah, we are taking it literally. Yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, are. fair, fair to take it literal. But okay. Another point that you made, you know, we talked a couple of times throughout the show already yeah. that if the earth was spinning as fast as it was, then how come like we're just still right. But then right. it makes me think about, okay, when I'm driving in my car or if I'm driving a car with someone who's going 80 miles per hour, right. can I tell that the car is moving fast? Cause as I look out the window, yes. But does my body, does my body feel like it's going at 80 miles per hour? No. Or when I'm in a plane, right? right. right. We know that planes move, you know, at thousands of miles per hour can i feel that yes yes i feel turbulence and stuff like that but can right. i feel how fast the plane is going no because i i probably would my neck would like probably snap or something right, if i right. could feel feel that so just using those concepts like I'm, I'm you know i'm not a physicist i'm not like necessarily a scientist but there are things that if we wanted to draw analogies to where like we're in a specific machine that's going fast, right? Yes. Yeah. We're not, our body doesn't necessarily feel how fast that thing is going. So right. we could easily be spinning around and not feel how fast the earth is going. I mean, I, I don't think it would be inhabitable if that was the case. I, well, again, well, that's just it. If it was a, it's part of our point, which is the globe. If if that was the case, wouldn't matter. Again, I, I I've I've heard the car thing and the train thing before, but you remember, you're inside the car, and you're inside the train. You roll down the windows of that car or that train, you're gonna know exactly how fast you're going. However, when it comes to motion, let's let's put it this way. Uh, and you put you've been on a plane before, I'm sure we are hypersensitive to movement meaning and and you this, notice this next time you're on a plane when you get up to cruising altitude by the way planes it's called airplane for a reason right airplane because plane you're flying a plane when you get up to cruising altitude you are absolutely tabletop flat i've flown enough business travel that when you get up to a cruising altitude the plane does not move at all you can you can watch a little thing of water on your thing it is the smoothest ride smoother than any car ever you know forget about the turbulence right well, that doesn't make any sense because remember, you're going over a curve. That plane traveling, uh, the average commercial flight travels. I mean, yeah, military planes travel thousands of miles an hour, but the average commercial plane travels less than 600 miles an hour. But it doesn't matter. That's really, really fast, right? When you're when you're traveling that fast, right, you will have to nose down or nose up constantly to adjust for the curvature of the earth. It never, ever happens. They go up, they go tabletop flat, and then they go down. Why, why don't they adjust for the curve? Remember, the curvature is supposedly eight inches per mile per mile. So over even 15, even just 50 miles, that's 1,700 feet of curvature. Depending on how fast you're going, you're going to have to nose down. When I'm in a plane at cruising altitude, I don't feel anything. We know, I know when planes lower their altitude, even by 100 feet, I can feel it. And that plane never raises or lowers. And I've asked pilots, I go, hey, you guys aren't doing it manually. What's adjusting for the altitude of the curvature of the earth? They go, oh, the plane just does that. And, and they just make the assumption that it does. Like all military people, it's like, really? You assume it does, but you don't know it does. It's like, well, it doesn't matter. Again, pilots are great. And we've got a lot of pilots on our side. There's wonderful guys that talk on my channel, which is pilots, all they care about in the long run is getting the passengers from point A to point B. They don't really question until very, very recently when we got involved, they actually, you know, if, is the earth curve when, but pilots that we talk to now, once they start thinking about it, because remember, they have a different viewpoint from that, that front glass, they're going, oh yeah, it's flat. And anyway, mm -hmm. sorry, but yes, so, I, so, I totally so, get you. So then what is the point of the race to space? Is that another conspiracy theory when you oh, have people like God. Elon and, uh, you oh, know, you're talking about the, you're talking about the new space race. Why, yeah. why are we talk about the old space race? Really quick. Remember, it used to be the 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 Soviets versus the United States back mm -hmm. in the day. That was the that was the great space race, which was cosmonaut versus astronaut. Astronaut being us, cosmonaut being not theirs. I have no idea. 
just a naming thing. But I remember Time Magazine had the, you know the the these two astronauts in you know the 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 cartoon version racing towards the moon. Right? What happened? Right? All the remember Russia was beating the tail off out, off of us, and then all of a sudden the Americans go six times, and the Russians just quit. They almost abandoned their 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 space race at all. It's like that's not how it would work. If anybody knows sports, it's like we put sm a small base on the moon. They p do a bigger base. We do a military base. Next thing you know, Time Magazine would do. Has the Cold War reached the moon? I have never seen that in the history of competition, especially between governments, where one side gets there and then the other side just says, "That's it. Pack it in." And then he just quit. The Russians just faded away. And I knew exactly why. It was because the, the programs, they talk to each other at the highest levels. And it's like, it's like you cannot fake it in two places simultaneously. The Russians had to fake it identical to us. We saw the footage. They saw the footage. And they're like, yeah, one of us has to take lead on this. The other person has to drop out. The Americans had more money, had more resources. We, we had to do it. The new space race, what you're talking about now, oh, my God. Oh, is that a, is that a soup sandwich? Oh, my God. Not only... Not only, yes, you have Virgin Galactic, Blue Horizon from Google, and then you have SpaceX. <laughs> Elon, you know, people touting him as the greatest man in the world. It's like, really tell me in 60 seconds how he made his money. Tell me where he came from. Most people don't even know he's not even American. He's freaking South African. And he's, he's going to be appointed, if, if Trump actually won, he's going to be appointed science advisor? Are you kidding? This guy? Everything he says is wrong. I'm going to do a bullet train from Los Angeles to San Francisco underground. No, I'm going to do a super plane from the United States to China in two hours. No, the the SpaceX that he's running is completely government subsidized. It is a it is a offshoot of NASA. That is all it is. It is filled with NASA engineers. They launch off of NASA pads. It's like why why are they even allowing to do that? They're direct competition to NASA, and yet they're still launching their stuff. No, the space race is absolutely one hundred percent fake. Which is, by the way, why they keep kicking the can down the road. Anyone that the questions like, well, look, they're launching this, and oh, the ISS, and oh, you know, the the Boeing Starliner. Think about this. There's an overarching question here, which is, if they aren't fake, then why haven't we gone anywhere? Meaning the Americans. Think about this realistically corporately, government-wise, the Americans went six times to the moon and back, up, 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 right? And then in 1972, they said, well, pretty boring. Nobody needs to go anymore. We're just going to shut it down. Good night, everybody. And they roll credits, and that's it. Nobody has even attempted to put another person on the moon since the Americans in 1972. Think about that. Most of the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, it's 2024 we still don't have a date. They just keep kicking the can down the road. I don't care what program it is. Boeing Starliner, the Starship X, all this crap. And the reason why is because, especially now, the, the reason why they, they can't do it now is they're scared to death of it, which is they, you, it is so tough, as you know, to fake things. Once it gets on the internet, people just microscope the hell out of it. They open it up in every sort of editor you can think of it, and they squint at it, and they're like, nope, not buying it. And so, and in fact, I even told, look, I'm a clever problem solver. And I, I put the challenge out there. I said, look, if somebody came to me with, I don't know, half a trillion dollars and said, hey, can you help us fake the space rover? I go, get the hell out of here. There's no way I touch that with a 10 foot pole. We have dedicated websites of nerds just for free. We'll do things like moviemistakes.com, right? Where they analyze every frame of every movie and to see if there's continuity errors. If you know anything about movies, everything's shot out of sequence to save money, right? And if a coffee cup moves from here to here and the guy didn't move it, someone's, oh, look at that. Coffee. Or the coffee cup's gone. What happened to the coffee cup? Right? The, the, sorry, let me lose, use a movie reference real, real fast on you. Lord of the Rings. You ever watch Lord of the Rings? Yeah, right, okay. You know of it, though. So the, the first Lord of the Rings movie, think of this, a multi-million dollar movie, right? Big franchise movie. Actually made it from the beginning all the way to the theaters, right? Think of all how many people went through editing and music and re-editing and production manuals. Remember, production assistants, their job is to stare at the film and make sure there's nothing weird happening on the screen, right? Made it all the way to the theaters. And then all of a sudden, the hobbits are leaving the Shire and there's a road in the corner with a white car driving through it. It's like, what? What the hell, right? And think about how many people that it went through. I'm the, and all of a sudden, some guy with his popcorn drops it, looks up, it's like, hey, that shouldn't be there. And then he calls up, and they had to recut the film to release it in the theaters, right? Imagine trying to fake a moon mission now. 
with what people would do to it. I mean, our people, I mean, our good Lord, our community alone would destroy it, which is why every time they do something, here's the great thing about social media, if you're in government agencies, is now you can re, you can you can analyze stuff in real time, what the po population, you don't have to wait. You can see, you don't have to wait till it gets to the theaters. You can see within seconds what the population, like kind of like the Tesla Roadster in space. You remember that stupid thing where, where Elon supposedly put that convertible in space? We were destroying that thing within minutes of that thing coming out. And then they just quietly just, it's like, well, we're going to try to head it towards Mars and turn off the cameras. It's like, why would you turn off the cameras? Why wasn't there a logo on the car anywhere? It's like, remember, this is SpaceX and Tesla. That thing should have been wall-to-wall -wall advertisements. And it wasn't. We, that, that's why. So, sorry. Long-winded answer to the, the, every space program right now is absolutely fraudulent from minute one. They're scared to death of doing it, which is why you will see trust me when I say this, delay after delay after delay, you kick the can down the road. Let me end this part with this. There was an Irish girl I was talking to, heavy, heavy nerd space girl, right? And she was in my face at freaking Belfast. And she was like, you know, and, and I, I go, fine, 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 fine. I go, you believe in the moon program, right? When we going back, when are we going back to the moon? And with this glossy, just distant, hopeful look in her eyes, she goes, soon, we're going back soon. It's like, yeah, you all say that, right? And then a year comes down the road and, and then they say, oh, well, it's going to be delayed another two years. And it just keeps happening. It's been, think about that, 1972, that's, uh, what was it, 50, 52 years? It's a long time. Mm. No attempts? Well, what if we just don't have the right technology for it? Maybe oh, they just come keep on. Iterating. I mean, okay, so the good thing about the flat earth theorists is that you guys are questioning things, right? Do yeah. I believe that there are certain government conspiracies? Of course, right? Because we live in a world where a lot of politicians aren't honest and they're self-serving, right? right? But I do think it's important to question things, yeah. right? But then there's also a point where like it, it almost comes off like most flat theorists don't believe in everything is a conspiracy, almost. I've heard some people say that, like, it's just yeah, a it's, complete it's, distrust of the yeah, government it's called, on it's, all levels. Yeah, it's called auto hoaxing, which is, and I don't necessarily believe in it, but I'll give you a quick example. Um, auto hoaxing means that nothing in the news is true at all, right? And, and which is why I do tell people, yes, you're absolutely right. Question, it's one of our things, question everything, right? Not necessarily condemn it, but question it. Look at things for, for what they are. I'll give, you, I'll give you a really quick example. You'll like this. So you've heard of things like uh, the Loch Ness Monster. Probably heard of that, right? Loch Ness Monster. You know, big dinosaurs. Some dinosaurs are still around, or, or you want to call them big swimming lizards. That's fine. Reptiles swimming around in, in, in a lock, in the locks, the late, deep lakes of Scotland, right? That's what the Loch Ness Monster is. Are they real? Yes or no? It's like, well, people will be like, no, it's silly. It's, it's like, really? Okay. Look up a, a fish called the coelacanth, C-O-E-L-A-C-A-N-T-H. It's an old prehistoric fish, Fish, right? Ugly, a whole bunch of extra fins and sharp teeth. Not very big. I mean, it's pretty big. You probably couldn't carry it. And uh, the coelacanth fish, well, they found fossilized records of it, and it's been extinct for at least 70 million years, right? Every scientist, every single scientist in the world would have bet the frickin' farm that this thing was extinct for 70 million years. Well, then the British government found one in a net off of South Africa in 1940, and then another one after over Mozambique, and then another one next to Mad Madagascar, and you're saying, hey, wait, aren't those in the same continent? Yeah, they're swimming all over the place in Africa, all day long, right? And now National Geographic is special. They're swimming around with them. And it's like, oh, okay, they're alive. And so, well, then science had to backpedal, right? And they had to say... Well, okay. They didn't say they were wrong. They said, well, it's a, it's a living fossil and it's, it's an evolutionary state of stasis and, and all this. Like, really? You're just not going to admit that the fossil, because it raises some huge questions. Like, okay, so what about the carbon dating? Are, are those fossils 70 million years old? Which we question, by the way, we question carbon dating. We question, we question the Big Bang Theory. We question evolution. That's just, so, sorry, circle back, right? And, and it's like, okay, now readdress that Loch Ness Monster thing. Are there extinct reptiles swimming in Loch Ness? And you say, no. It's like, why? Well, because they've been extinct 11, you know, 100 million years. Oh, you mean like that fish? That fish over there that you were dead wrong on? Again, which is why I hear from, from people all the time. It's, it's, it's like, okay, so you were wrong about the fish. 
really wrong, absolutely wrong. Everyone and all your friends were wrong, but you're pretty confident on this on this reptile thing that that's in Loch Ness. And it's like same same thing with the 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 flat Earth, which I, which segues into flat Earth, which is think about this. Because people will, like you said, you know, we, we should question things and governments lie and yeah, businesses lie and sports people lie. Come on, Lance Armstrong. That's a great example. All day long. Harvey Weinstein, entertainment. I can do that all day long. Uh, Enron. Oh my God. Every government assassination ever. And they, remember, we have, technically we have no spies, right? We, we don't have any spies. We have an intelligence network, but we have no spies because we're not legally allowed to, we're not, we don't have spies. We have, we have people, but you know, they don't kill anybody. Really? Ever? So, but flat earth is too big. That's, that's, that's the, people are comfortable in their own wheelhouse, right? It's like, okay, I believe that uh, the entertainment industry, there's some weird things happening, right? And I believe in the sports world, yes, there, there has been a rigged boxing match from time to time. Really? Not, not anything in NFL, not anything in the NBA. I'm oh, sorry, but I want to burst the bubble of your audience members, but I want to throw that out really fast, which is if there's enough, you want to know how conspiracies happen? It's usually the money, right? I know it sounds cliche, follow the money, but think about this. When money gets introduced into whatever thing, when that money reaches a certain level, all bets are off. Meaning people, the, the rule of media, give the people what they want, which is it doesn't matter who is the best team. Who do the people that are paying the money want to see in the finals? Michael Jordan was great, right? But don't think for a second that that second three-peat wasn't a cakewalk for him because when he left the NBA the first time, TV revenue dropped 30%. One guy left, 30% drop. They begged him to come back. Oh, magically, he won three more titles in a row and people wanted to see it. They loved him for winning. You make sure it happens. That's how it works. So again, when it comes to something like this, the Flat Earth, do you keep the flat earth a secret? If you don't figure it out in 1960, until 1960, do you tell the public? I, look, I'm a conspiracy guy. I'm a truth to me. I, I'm the first one to die. No, you do not tell the people. You can't. You can't run that risk. You know what would happen? The, the backlash against science, the economic backlash, the academic, oh my God, the libraries. I mean, the, it would be chaos, potentially, until you could figure out a way to spin it to the public. You would have to wait years, and I don't know develop some sort of internet infrastructure and hand out 6 billion smartphones and make sure you could get everybody on the same page in a short amount of time, sort of like now. So, I mean, I think it's one of those situations where I, I do think, again, kind of tying back to what we started off talking about, subjective truth versus objective truth. Yeah. I do think that potentially what the planet looks like could be considered in the objective truth bucket because we should be able to test that out we have the technology we we would hope that we have the scientific computation to figure that out so that's the part that I guess makes me want to ask you if there was someone to come out that was able to convince you like are you even open-minded to the fact that the earth might not be flat or are you married yes. no, to no, that no, no, theory no no uh, okay, no, but to your point, yes, you're absolutely right. And that's a, that's a great question, which is, uh, and I've been asked this a number of times, uh, is there anything that convinced me? You got to remember, that in the beginning, I didn't want it to be true. I was hoping that someone would come at me and say, here is absolute, positive, 100% proof that you are wrong, go away. And they never did, so I had to come up with my own because people, people have asked me that. It's like, is there anything that you could do? It's like, yes, there are two things you could do. One is cheap, one is not as cheap. I'll give you the not as cheap version uh, first off, which is all you'd have to do, and again, it should be easy now because we have Blue Horizon and Virgin Galactic and SpaceX and all those other guys, Boeing Starliner, which is um, you put a camera on the side of a rocket, you point it down at the ground, some sort of angle, and you leave orbit of Earth. That's all you have to do, which is, and it's like, okay, what's that going to show? It's like, by the way, try not to use a fisheye or a wide angle lens if you can help it. Just shoot it off in the distance. Make sure it's not on the second stage, you know, the stage that gets dropped off, which happens all the time, pointed down at the earth. Why? Because eventually, as you get high enough, remember, it's going to turn, it's like, like you're zoomed into an orange or an apple. As you pull away from it, it's going to turn into a nice spherical globey thing. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Like SpaceX should have done, by the way, when the Tesla Roadster in space was on its way to Mars. And it's like, no, we're just going to turn off the cameras. It's like, why? Why would you turn it off? There's three HD cameras. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it's perfect. 
This has never happened in the history of space travel. That's kind of odd. And if you believe in law of averages, almost damn impossible because all these different space agencies, remember there's like five uh, governments now with launch capabilities, supposedly, um, Europe, Japan, China, United States, and Russia, right? And none of, none of them have done it. In fact, no astronaut has officially, and we'll just use the moon stuff, but you can use it in other things, has, has taken a camera, which again, why you never did this on the moon and turned in a 360 degree circle. And that's because if you're on a sound stage, you'd be breaking the fourth wall. You know, going, why, why they don't, why in all your favorite TV shows, why don't you, can't you do a 360 degree circle? So you can't, because the one wall is the freaking cameras. Um, that's the most expensive way. But the cheap way, which was something I mentioned uh, a while, but I'll, I'll, I'll review it, which is the spacesuit test. You want to you convince me? Here's, here's because I made a clue that basically said this. It said the spacesuit is a lie because it can't work. You can't, the, there is no technology that I know of or has heard of or even theoretical that keeps a spacesuit from expanding in a vacuum and then blowing up. So put me in a put me in a vacuum chamber. Remember, every spacesuit since the 60s has worked flawlessly. Nobody's ever died in a spacesuit for, for no apparent reason, right? Which is weird because the early spacesuits looked like motorcycle suits. Weird. Put me in a spacesuit, put me in a vacuum chamber, pull the switch. Tell me what happens. Again, does hardly cost you anything. Vacuum chamber's already there, spacesuit's already there. It's like, and of course, I'd hope that a, a scientist would get in there with me, put your money where your mouth is. Hey, stand right next to me with your spacesuit. Are you confident now this is going to happen? Because again, I'm willing to go down for the cause. If I'm willing to turn myself into a martyr to prove a point, of course, they'd probably blame it on something. Like that. It's like, oh, he had a heart attack. Whatever. It's like, yeah, sure. But between those two things, oh, yes, that was, now, would the spacesuit absolutely convince me otherwise? No, but it would be pretty damn close because the, the physics behind it don't make sense. Um, uh, but the, the well, again, the, the striking one for me was the, uh, the camera one, mm -hmm. which is there's all sorts of camera stuff they don't show you. It's the omission. The, one, of, one of our guys, Max Malone, back in the day, he was really fond of saying, he goes, he goes, don't forget, it's not just what you're looking for. It's what you're, what's missing. Certain things, it's like I, omission is a very creative way of, of uh, misdirection where you're looking over here, something should be here, but it's not. Uh, and it's so many camera angles we don't see. Uh, you know, little things like when they were doing the 80s space shuttle stuff and they were using, I thought when, you know, when they were posing for the photographs, I thought they were motorcycle helmets for the photographs. I didn't think, oh, okay. But then I saw some of the, the 80s footage, you know, grainy VHS footage. And they were actually using these motorcycle helmets in the in the space shuttles. Well, they weren't pressurized. They you could see their necks, right? And they were wearing short sleeve shirts and no gloves. And it's like, well, that's pretty casual, considering nowadays, you know, they're all they're completely you know gloved up. And it's like, all right, whatever. But yeah, between those two things, oh no, I would give up flat Earth in a second. Of course, the most expensive, which people have proposed all day, it's like it surprised you didn't ask it. If somebody puts you on a rocket on SpaceX or Blue Horizon, would you? It's like, yeah, but they'd never do it because I was going to ask that. It, oh, yeah. The, no, I've had British. <laughs> the closest I got was a British production team for a television team. They, they were trying to, to get money together. It's like they will never allow that to happen because what they do is, again, it's a military operation. Remember, all space stuff is military. And then they, they would make you sign the, um, uh, the NDA, the non-disclosure on it. And they say, sorry, you, you know, there's certain things you can't say. It doesn't matter what you say. You're going to you're going to have to follow this narrative. And it's like, nope, which is why, by the way, they've never dragged a flat earther or even a conspiracy guy on anything when it when it comes to space. They've never yeah. even well, they've never even um, thought about doing it. Which well, is I don't of... even I don't even think the the group would believe it because I think inherently there's an opposition to the government and what we're being fed. So I think even if a flat earther went and were, was able to capture like what the earth looked like to some extent i don't think people in the community would actually buy it they're, they're, you're, you're right there is some what would that be would that be cognitive dissonance i think where where yes you, you're right if i went up and i came back down well first they thought that somebody got to me depending on what i said unless i unless i detailed it in a certain way however it's theoretical because they're never letting me up that being said though there's a there was a british television show good lord it's like 15 years old now called um, space cadets 
you want to see some weird stuff watch space cadets the reruns of that in fact you can f- probably find the thing on youtube where because remember there is no british space program right never existed it's never going to exist for whatever reason and they did a scr- um a casting call and they got some people it's like okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna put make you part of a british space program right and then they take them off to a military base which was just a retrofitted, you know, mothball military base. And they put them through the paces through a, a training program. And the, the compilation was they put them in a capsule or you know, a thing and they sent them off to space and they put them in orbit, right? Except that it was all fake. But you don't know that because, you know, you, were, you they when they were being transitioned in the capsule, there were no windows and there were some LCD screens and smoke, but the vibrations and everything seemed very, very real. And it was one of the most heartbreaking reveals ever because then they took the capsule and they wheeled it into a soundstage with a full-blown audience of hundreds of people and they had them get out of the capsule to, to find out. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, you never left Earth. And the entire program was fake. And by the way, you did it on, on television and here you are and you signed the waivers. So And, and you could tell the, the mix of of elation because they were in front of an audience that was cheering for him. But at the same time, it's like, wait, all these weeks and months I've been with you guys, it's been a complete lie. And I was never going, I was never going to space. The point was, is they were fooled. You know what I mean? So I would be, let's, let's put it this way. If you try, you couldn't do it with me, but if I, if you tried, it got to the point. It's like, okay, we're going to put you in a rocket. If there was any point where I was put in a place where before I got into the rocket, I was put into a room where I didn't have, I didn't know how exactly I got into that room. Yeah. Then I'd be suspect. You know, yeah. it's like, Oh, you know, all, cause all you have to do is like, Oh yeah. You know, rumble, rumble, rumble. They land you. Sorry. One more thing really quick, mm-hmm. which is it's a human being. Again, I think it's part of our, our, our system here where we are very susceptible to illusion and magic tricks. There's a wonderful experiment out there. You, I'm sure it's happened to you. Happens to everybody which is uh, if you're driving in a car, right? And you're in stop and go traffic or maybe on a train and all of a sudden you zone out for a second, right? You're, you're just like, and then the car next to you moves either, you know, moves forward and you have no idea if you're moving or the car is moving, right? It's like, did I take my foot off the brake? Oh, gee, you know, you're freaking out for a second, right? That is a human weakness. It is absolutely with everywhere. They did um, a psychological study on this some years ago where they took a wooden car they put people in it and they put a wall in front of that wooden car and it was on tracks. And sometimes they would move the car and sometimes they would move the wall in front. People cannot figure it out. Nobody could. It is a human human being weakness. So what I, what that means is it's almost like we were we were designed to be fooled by this. Meaning we are we are subject to to any sort of simulations that that are out there, which is why flight simulators work so well. Well, when you're when you're training airline pilots, you put them in a simulator and it's just a box, you know, with some screens, you tip it up. I mean, I know people to this day that get sick if they watch any sort of first person roller coaster footage on television. I used to get nauseous. I didn't know what was happening back in the early 90s when I was playing the, the first version of Mario Kart, which was on this flat tabletop flat thing. And it was like, what is wrong? Why am I getting sick? Right. And that's that's we're just subject to it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Final question regarding yes. this. And I don't know how spiritual you are, but when it comes to the flat earth theory, Testify. one of the things, <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> when, when it comes to flat earth theory, something that one of the places I've looked to kind of, you know, see, could this potentially be true are from people who've had near death experiences. Now, I don't know if you are into near-death experiences or you listen to these accounts right but essentially these are people who clinically die and leave their bodies right Right. and end up coming back into their bodies and like reliving their life so they they do die they kind of like they're the ones that essentially if we wanted to get a sense of what happens after we die right i think they come close to telling us what happens and a lot of people have talked about seeing the earth, what it looks like going on different planets and kind of describing a planetary system that's similar to our understanding, the the larger public's understanding of what the earth looks like and what the star system looks like, right? So to me, I use that as an additional clue as to, well, if the earth was flat, I think people would be coming back and saying, hey, wait a minute, 
re- we actually have it wrong, right? right. Um, so I just want to hear your thoughts on that. I don't know if you've nope, ever nope, researched nope. that or looked into that. No, that's good. And and actually, believe it or not, nobody's asked me that officially, but I do have an opinion on it. Uh, because, now I don't know anyone that's had a near-death experience that's been a flat earther, unfortunately. However, I do know people that have been into astral projecting, if you know what that is, which is kind of like doing the near-death experience, but without death, right? Where you're, you're like, your soul's leaving your body and you're you're heading out there. Here's where it gets interesting. Those people, and again, I think it's part of the design of this place. Because think about this. There are people that have been come back from death all the time, right? Especially drowning victims. Happens all the freaking time. You wouldn't want, if you were the creator of this place, you wouldn't want that to be the big reveal. Where all of a sudden it was like, why do all the drowning, you know, potential drowning victims come back and say it's a flat earth? However, the astral projecting people, before I, I, have, I have the privilege of knowing people that are have been pre-flat earth and then post-flat earth that kept the astral projecting before they were in a flat earth they saw a globe after they were in flat earth they saw it flat and oh interesting I, so i think if you if you were lucky enough to find you know i'm you know what because of you i may go out and actually see if i can find anybody because near-death experiences you know you can't just predict those anywhere unless you know i could you know i could try to drown somebody i'll, I'll, I'll get somebody after this and I'll, I'll see if i can try to kill them the um uh <laughs> but it's true which is it but uh, i think it's i think it's just part of the system which is if you uh um uh, depending on where your state of mind is because what why would the astral projecting people all of a sudden change their view and they said it was very clear at that point at that point when they say when they came out it was sort of like this i'm like okay sure i'll, I'll go with that but at the same time i well- just, just to interject really quickly, you know what? That kind of makes sense. And there's this other principle in hermetic teachings where it's like we live in a mental universe and a lot of our experiences are created from our mind, right? So like the things we believe there you go, are the things that we will see, right? That's why some people who have near-death experiences will say they see Jesus, they see Muhammad, or they see any sort of like spiritual being or um, religious being that they have an affinity towards right. in those experiences. And a lot of near-death experiencers say they don't experience hell, but like there's a small percentage that says that they experience hell, right? Based on their belief systems. And when you like dig deeper into some of those stories, you realize the people who experience hell believe that there was a hell, for example, believe right. that they would be damned because they sinned. So like that was what was shown to them. So I could kind of see what you're talking about, where it's like a difference in belief systems could also project um, or or have people experience certain things in the astral or, you know, supernatural realms based and, on what they believe. So and I'll use that. I'll steal that from you, which was it, it is interesting that when people have in America have near death experiences, it's always Jesus. Find me an American that near death experience that saw Krishna, right? <laughs> However, in India, it's the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. So yeah, which is why I try to remind people. I go, look, I, again, I, I was raised born again Christian, but there are five major religious houses in this world, each about the same size, each about the, you know, have the same sort of influence, except in media. But that's a whole nother thing. Right, right. Okay, well, this has been a great conversation. And I, I think we went down a couple of different rabbit holes. There's so much more we could touch on, right? Because there's yes, so many are. different, yeah. like theories out there, like the ice wall in Antarctica, and like all these different things. Oh, God, that, yeah. Yeah, 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 so, you know, but this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much, Mark, for stopping by Shifting Dimensions. To close it out, I just want to ask you a fun question. And that is, have you shifted in perspective on anything lately? And it could be as lighthearted as you want it to be or as deep as you want it to be. I always try to change perspectives when I can. Perspective is so important. You can't get so locked in on on something that you're not willing to uh, bend out of it. Um, i trying to think if there's anything recently that I, that I really got into. Usually it's media. Um, something, something in the, in the media world that, that, uh, but it, I'm trying to think if anything really, really comes to mind. I think it was mostly, you know, okay. I, I got one, which was the, one of the things that that's changed, it's been alt is altered on a regular basis is I'm a huge believer in dualism. If you know what that is, which is you can't really appreciate one thing without the other which is, you know, hot, you can't, how do you know what hot is without cold, pain without pleasure, light without darkness, and, and that sort of thing. And I, say, I think a lot of this world is based off of it. And if you don't have perspective, you get locked into one. 
And in the media world, I, I run into, I, I, I've noticed that people that when you grow up, there, there's something called a hero's journey when it comes to the plot, which is there's got to be hills and valleys. Otherwise, how do you really appreciate the end? And so when people think they're down, you know, about certain, it's like, oh, why has this happened to me? It's like, look, if it didn't happen to you, right, what, how, what would you... What would you have really gained in, in the process? As much as I know, and I know in our community, for example, like in Behind the Curve, I, I tell people, uh, I, I'll, let me end with this, otherwise I'm going to drone on, which is they, um, in, in Behind the Curve, I ask people, okay, what would you change about the movie? It's like, oh, I take out the scientist and the astronaut and the psychologist. And I go, oh, so you'd remove all the opposition. You there, you basically turn, it'd be big, turn into a flat earth propaganda film. It's like, yeah. I go, yeah, oh, so you're a purist. I get it. You know, go team. But that's that's not that's not a good storytelling, right? You want the the you know, the hero is defined by the villain, right? You have to have a villain, you have to have a hero, you have to have the ups and downs and the climactic ending. You know, the all great stories boil down to this. Sorry, last name, which is uh, three three parts. All great stories, which is you introduce the characters, you create a challenge for them, and then it's resolved one way or the other. Right? It's either a happy ending popcorn movie, or it's a bitter tragedy that wins all the awards usually that is that is what you are part of right now you are in the this world is a is a giant stage uh, and you uh, shakespeare said it we uh, all the world's a stage and we are just players in it there it is it's my last ending thank you so much mark where can people find you if they want to dive deeper into your content or purchase your books uh if you like me uh if you <laughs> like what i've been saying at all then uh just search uh, flat earth mark uh, that's all you have to do, go down the rabbit holes. If you don't like me, my name is David Weiss. <laughs> and my channel oh, is... thank you. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, my channel is deep inside. No, no. But <laughs> seriously, no, Dave's got some good stuff. The uh, But but all you have to do, I, I don't give out any websites or anything like that. Just type in any search engine, uh, Flat Earth Mark. You will go down rabbit holes. Don't just listen to my stuff. Uh, uh, by the way, take what I have said to you today with a grain of salt. In mm -hmm. the end, do your own research figure it out by yourself, you will be much happier for it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Mark, for stopping by Shifting Dimensions. Thank you.